Let's open. Let's open things. Fio. It's a Fio box. It says Fio Technology, and it's doing a weird. It's weird. This box is weird. I'm trying to open it up without like the address part on the front being like visible, but it's the back has no. Actually, wait. The back does have a. Nah, fuck it. We're opening up the front. We're opening the front. We're front opening here. We go straight in the front door. None of this back door malarkey. Anybody use the word malarkey ever, ever again? Oh, you know what this is gonna be? This is gonna be the Q7, which is like, do you guys remember the Q5? Back, be back before the BTR5 and the BTR3 were like the best thing Fio made. They made the Q5 and then the Q5S, which were the big Bluetooth handheld units. And apparently the seven is now out, which has got to compete with the new topping G5 and like the Death on Ray Prelude, which I fucking love still. And there's like, so it's like a weird, there's waves of things coming through the internet. Cleaning ladies are here that took the bag away. Okay, look at this box. This is like what I do with boxes where I want to sm send the smallest box to save money. So I just manhandle and mangle other boxes. Might be time to bird shit. <sighs> Put these lights on. And then we'll go on, there you go. Actually, buttons, yes. Q7, it's very big, holy, oh my God. I didn't actually see pictures of it, I just know that it's called the Q7, and presumably it will do what I said it'll do, which is the same thing the Q5 did. Uh. At that cost though, is it the most expensive Bluetooth amp? I don't know what the what the topping G5 costs. It's in my basement. I don't know what it actually is running right now. It can't be more than 400 bucks. Like for just a stand, like the, the Death on Ray Prelude is four, four, 420, 460. So that's like the maximum I think anyone would, would relatively be willing to pay for something that's gonna use Bluetooth. But this is showing USB, DSD, 2.822 million bits or some shit. It's a very nice box. They've, they've calmed down. They've got still the, like the rainbow going, but uh, it's, it's much simpler. Holy fuck. It happened again. It happened again. We're back to the M17. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's a murder brick. It's a murder. I didn't think, I was hoping it would be like a little bit bigger than the other one. What is that? How to use a rubber pad exclusively designed for the case. What? <sighs> I, I, uh, that's a torque wrench. We'll get to that in a second. So apparently, as picture shows, affix the rubber pad to the buttons to improve the sense of touch and narrow the gap between the physical buttons and the leatherette case. The rubber pad comes with adhesive so it can be used repeatedly. Um, what? It feels like you made the leather case wrong. Why is it so big? Well, this is one of those things that's gonna end up in a yard sale just because I can't physically hold it. That's Chinese, that's not Chinese. This is a thing. I, uh, my, my enthusiasm for a product falls right to the fucking floor when it's the size of an actual physical, it's just heavy. Uh, that's why it's so big. They went with this again. They went with one of these. It's one of these, it's, it's, it's this sort of bullshit again. Oh my God. Heavy box, USB-C cable. USB-C to USB-A cable. Little USB-C jumper, USB-C to... Why is a USB-C to USB jumper a right angle? And always, I've never seen a right angle lightning connector. They all, they're, they're just, they don't exist. These are the pads for the buttons, I'm assuming, or rubber feet. It uses the, the power supply, 12 volt, two amp, 24 watt, uses that thing. So that's your full power mode. Let's throw this out before the cats come and eat it. Got the doors open, let's weed come in and out. We've also got an adapter for the USB cable, USB-C to USB-C to make it 
USB not. Wait, so why would you give me two of those? Because now I've got USB-C to USB-C, USB-C to USB-A, and then USB-A to USB-C adapter. So you can have two of the same cable. Uh, let's touch this mythical pad, and then I'll pull that fucking thing apart. Yeah, now the Q5. I thought the Q5 was looking too big. Oh, they give you like six of these. I'm assuming this is for the buttons. I don't, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to really analyze. Oh man. I actually don't hate that as far as like how you close it because usually it's like friction. So that's nice. We're gonna peel this off because the tab is outside. Ooh. Drop that in the box. It's ESS. We're still going ESS, which is fine. I'm dropping this out of its mega kit. How do I put this down? I guess I could stand it up. So yeah, here's the buttons on the side. That, let me see. Let me put this back in for a second. Oh yeah, there's definitely, there's a lot of space here. Like it moves, like I'm not pressing the buttons right now, but they're, they're going. So you put one of those on the side of the unit so that it pushes these buttons more more easily through this mega case, which I gotta say, it's a nice case. Probably could use a wife who's stitched on it. Holy shit. So if you watch my M17 review, this is basically that only we've got fake like textured rubber on the back, rubber leather, digital knob on top, not an analog knob. We still have the caps over the quarter inch aluminum caps, aluminum and plastic or aluminum total, a, a quarter inch, 4.4, balance 2.5, 3.5, uh, and the bottom's got so many things. We've got battery or DC input, so you could, dis you could disable the battery. A lot of people have been asking me that for le lately. They want a desk unit that's also a portable, but if you leave a portable unit charging constantly, 24 hours a day, it kills the battery like fast. He got like a year out of a unit instead of five years. So having a battery disconnect is what that is. There's also an on off switch for USB charge. That's power, battery, or, D or DC. Then USB charge is written here and you have on or off. So it's on to USB charge. And then you have a cap over your fiber optic output. I'm sorry, fiber optic input. So they made a round cap that fits in a fiber optic. So you have an optical in. That'll be good for when I'm reviewing it, and I'll talk it up weirdly. A reset button or USB-C. Then this is the 12 volt DC in. I'm glad I kept my nails slightly long or else you wouldn't be able to get this shit out. I don't know how you'd fucking do it. One of those people, and then your coaxial in. So you have optical in, coaxial in, USB in. And then there's no interface. There's a little screen up here, which will turn this thing on. Let's see what the fuck that says. Oh. Is that literally the size? I don't have the unit up here, do I? Fuck. I think the beat. No, wait. I do have it up here. I must have it up here. I was just charging the BTR7. Oh, did I bring it in the basement? Where did I put it? I brought it down the basement. All right. So, yeah, you have your choice of English or not. How do I go down? Oh, for fuck's sake, please go down. All right, using the knob. So, we're going to do English. And that's an enter, and then we could pick. So we got volume here. Optical, Bluetooth. Jesus Christ, this is the Bluetooth, is Bluetooth. And we've got the RGB lights doing their RGB thing over here. I, I don't even know what to do. Uh, if I put it, if I fucking Bluetooth to my phone, I gotta go fucking get a headphone. Anyway, it's at 74%, and uh, we can go through the, the menu. Actually, is there, is there a menu? Holding this will probably, yeah, there you go. So you got gain, you got low, medium, high, and super high. Let's put it on medium. Single-ended output, balanced output, lin, uh, line out volume, max volume, ultra high gain. So you have another gain that's a separate setting that's not in the gain me menu, which if you do that, enable auto or manually. So does that mean it's on? Oh, so now I can go to the gain setting. No, I still only have super high. I don't know what's going on. I have to read some shit. Uh, ultra high gain filters, dimmer, screen timeout, U audio, which probably means USB audio is 2.0 or 1.1. And uh, then language, factory reset, and version. Very, very cool font on that. Hold that to get out of it. I love the little optical text with some stuff around it. This is all glass down the middle. 
Well, this is a thing that happened just now. So I'm gonna turn that off. Put that and rest this gently over there. Cause that's some, um, I don't know how, like here's the thing. As, as a reviewer, as Zeos, I try to be as honest as I can in all aspects. Cause lying is fucking difficult. It's, it's easy to lie, but then you get caught in the lie and the lie does the thing. So I try to never lie about anything, anything ever. And to be honest with you, as soon as I pull that out, from the sheer size, I'm disinterested. Yard sale item. So I'm trying to imagine how good it would have to be to make it worth like me wanting to keep that around. Instead of like, if it's $700 or something, I think it's $700. Like, even if I got $250 for it in a yard sale, that's $250 I could put towards food or paying for the cat shit or, or paying bills. And it's like, how good would it have to be? Like what headphone would have to just come out of it and sing? Cause it, it doesn't look like it has like a lot of features. It's not featuring any, um, I mean, you're gonna have the app, the app's gonna do things, but it's not gonna do like crazy high-end app features. I don't know, I feel like it's missing that weirdness. Like it's just huge. Just, it's, it's literally a BTR5 with a couple extra connections. But then what? More power? Better sound? Like you gotta do more than just sound better. It, to me. Zeos needs, oh, it sounds better, but this sounds better. That's not what audiophilia is about. I'm about the experience. If that was a fucking mini disc player, keeping it for life. Just fucking, by the way, we brought back mini disc. I'd be like, I gotta find my old mini discs. Cause that, just some weird shit like that. Or if it had like a USB dock that like popped out and you put a USB key in it that came with it, comes with a FIO, like 512 gig USB key, and you slide it in there and pop it down and then it like locks in place behind the glass and then you could pull it out and plug it into your computer to download new music to put it in there and it's just like a dumb player that only has, that uses an app to control it. Which I guess when you're using it as Bluetooth it would, but what if it didn't use it as Bluetooth? What if it was reading directly? Kind of like the, um, the Shanling player, like the, uh, the uh, M, what the fuck's the model number of that one? Point is, do weird shit. Zeos is bored with bigger and better and bigger and better. I want bigger and better and oh my God, do you see this? Anyway, this is a Tech 10 dildo. Actually no, this is a, this is a very important piece of equipment because um, I did some brake work on uh, some cars and you need to torque down the lug nuts and my friend torqued down the lug nuts but then two days later after you've been driving around you gotta torque down the lug nuts again. So this is a torque wrench or for those people who actually work on cars, you should have one. I never owned one. Uh, Tecton has been highly recommended. Uh, they've been through a bunch of independent tests and studies on the YouTubes. And what a torque wrench basically does is you set it. So there's a setting here, how many foot pounds? This goes to 150 foot pounds. And I know that a Lincoln MKC, you need 100 foot pounds when you put, so when you, you tighten your lug nuts as best you can, and you put the, the thing on here and you go like this. Tighten, click. When it goes click, it'll loudly click whatever you set it for. And that means you're now pushing 100 foot pounds on this thing, which if this was a foot long off the pivot, I'd have to push 100 pounds down on it since it's longer than, a, than that. You could grab it at the very end. Let's see, you, you unscrew this to loosen that. Then you can adjust the tension of the clicker. And then once you have it, and you could have it, uh, these are the, oh, don't go that far. You've got the rough estimates are like 10 foot pounds and you mark it at zero, boom, and you tighten this back up. And I prefer the clicky ones to the digital ones. I knew someone with the digital one and it was like, that's annoying. Cause then you would have to push it and it would take a second and be like, beep. And I'm like, that's not as good. I want to go click, click. I think my Caprice requires 140 uh, pounds per uh, foot pounds. Calibrated and tested number five. So anyway, I got this one. This is actually a two pack I got on Amazon. And this one arrived yesterday and I was like, oh God, did they only send me this one? I can't torque things down with this. So that's a full size half inch drive. And look at this little witty, bitty baby one. I got them both for $105. And like, I don't know, if you're rebuilding like motors, you're doing carburetor stuff or anything like head gaskets and you don't need like foot pounds, if you need inch pounds, this will go from 1.1 inch pounds to 16.9 inch pounds. So you go click, 
click. And in fact, this one had a warning that says you're gonna feel it more than you're gonna hear it. Because some of these super light settings are just super light and you're just gonna feel it go click, click. So torque specifications are important. Look them up for your car today. Because if you just crank on a wheel lug and it's like, it's tight enough, it might not be. My car at 140 is like, that's death. That's push it so fucking hard you nearly die. And I would almost never do that with just like a regular like a tire iron. So yeah, that thing, one of these is gonna be way more important to my life. It's this one. I should do that for every video. I should be like, well, let's see, I have this audio piece, but I think a torque wrench is probably more convenient and useful. So yeah, let's put this back and then we'll go torque down some wheels. I'll keep it in this nice little red case and we'll burn this. So long as that works, and then we'll keep this in this little case. And I should have, I hate that there's instructions because then what do you do? Because then they fall out of the box every time. It's, it's fucking annoying. It's 